so you want to know about stencils well it's only the world's oldest art known to man the first paintings ever made by humans were outlines of human hands 60 years ago, a group of archaeologists discovered a series of paintings across a hundred limestone caves in Indonesia. That's crazy, right? Oh, and this pig. About 45,000 years ago, there are the oldest specimens of art. They would use pulverized rock in order to get the pigment. They would mix it with water and tag the inside of caves using their mouth. So, at least you don't have to do that with your stencil. Stencils are a great way to make your images pop. You see stencils used often in street art, maybe because it makes for a quick getaway. Many times you'll see artists create stencils using high contrast photographs or collages. Making a stencil is very tedious and has some restrictions. But a plus is if you keep your stencil in good shape, you can use it over and over and over again. Stencils are optional with your project, just like acrylic paint or paint markers. You get to pick and choose which mediums you wanna use and how you'll apply them. We're just here to guide you and give you a little push when you're afraid to swim. So, with your board, you might use stencils for a certain color, word, shape, or you might just tell me to stop talking about stencils and I'll cry about it. Anyways, the stupid way to put it is making stencils is just cutting holes in paper, which is true, but you need to learn how to skillfully cut holes. Let's start with how you hold your sword. I mean, your exacto blade, this guy. Now, this thing is really, really dangerous. So be careful and always put a cap on it after each time of using it. It might be pretty obvious, but when you start cutting, you're always gonna use both of your hands. One hand is holding the paper, guiding the blade. Your hands are going to work together the entire time, just like best friends. One holding it down, making it taut or tight, so you can get make clean cuts, and the other one is guiding the blade. Are you confused? Well, the best way to learn it is to do it. So take out your sketchbook right now and rip out a piece of paper out of that bad boy. All right, now draw a square on that piece of paper. Hurry up. All right, you drew your square. Flip that sketchbook on the back. That's gonna be your cutting mat. Hold the paper like this. Lightly cut your square out. Congratulations, you made your first stencil. Now the job of a stencil is to paint where you want but more importantly, a stencil's job is to mask where you don't want paint. The stencil's job is like a football player. It blocks the other team and lets the person with the ball or the paint come through. It can't be that easy though, right? Nah. When I was talking about restrictions earlier, this is what I'm talking about. And I'll show you how good stencil artists will cover it up. Let's say you wanna make a stencil like this. So you cut the shape out of your paper. Can you see what the problem is? How the heck is this paper going to float in the air after you cut a hole all around it? That's a good question. It can't. You can't have any islands when making stencils, meaning your paper needs structure in order to maintain transferring to paint a surface. Now, there's many ways to hide this, to create what I call support beams. This is a basic form of using support beams to hold your paper in place like this. But a good stenciler will find ways to, to hide their support beams and to lend them to your design, kind of like these examples. So before you ever start cutting your design, check it to see if there are any spots of floating paper that you need to fix. There's ways of not having to create support beams in your design but that requires a vinyl cutter and transfer tape. And we are learning the basic ways to cut a stencil with an X-Acto blade. But we're not gonna learn the prehistoric ways. The most common stencil you'll see 
are single layer stencils. Banksy, a famous graffiti artist, uses single layer stencils often. Here's a design of his. But layering stencils can create a cool effect as well. One of the most iconic layered stencils is of Obama by an artist named Shepard Fairey. Do you recognize it? Here's another one of his famous works. There are methods of turning photographs into stencil using Photoshop by posturizing and messing with the threshold and contrast, but I want to teach you the basics of stencils. There's hundreds of tutorials out there that are about turning photographs into stencils. Look them up on your own time and let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to teach you two tricks that I think will help you. And it's basically tricks in order to keep your stencil down on your board. One of the biggest hassles with stencils is underspray. It gets really annoying when you can't get clean edges. And it's difficult if you have a curved surface like a skateboard. So one thing you can do is cut squares where you think stencils will come up in the air. Now stick tape to cover the square and stick the stencil to the surface of your board. If you do this in certain places, it'll help with underspray and create cleaner lines. The second method of creating cleaner lines is to use tape on the edges of paper that stick up. A good way to do this is to tape the edges down and slightly cut around the edge, leaving enough tape for the edge of the paper to be taped down. Be careful doing this though. You don't want to cut into your board. So if you could cut the whole stencil out of painter's tape, that would be cool, but that's basically impossible. There's such thing as stencil glue, which sprays a temporary glue on the back of your stencil so you can stick it down to your surface before you paint, but sometimes it leaves residue. So uh, we're just gonna teach you the basics with painter's tape. But like I said earlier, it's not prehistorically basic. Now, let me talk about aligning layers of stencils. If you're trying to get fancy on me, Creating a guide shape on each layer of stencil will help you align your stencils perfectly. My favorite shape to use is basically a plus sign. I use this because it helps me line up my image horizontally and vertically on each layer of stencil. If I put a plus sign on each layer of stencil in the exact place of each stencil, I'll put it in a place that doesn't interfere with my imagery. I'll paint this not on the board, but on a taped piece of paper on the board. Now, since the plus sign is in the same place of each layer, each layer will align perfectly. Let me know if that doesn't make sense to you. Now, there's no one that said you can't paint layers below or above a stencil with different kinds of paint other than spray paint. That's an excellent way to add a multitude of colors to your stencil. Also, Drawing lines around your stencils with paint markers is a quick and easy way to cover up mistakes or overspray. That's my rundown on stencil. Hope you got something out of it. Maybe you can master the skill of cutting holes in paper. And I hope that you can make something authentic to yourself. And I hope it's a really rewarding process. See you soon.